a steam plant using Cotswold Heritage Components, part one. This is episode one, removing the boiler parts from the baseboard. On screen at the moment is a Cotswold Heritage Griffin steam engine. This Griffin steam engine is like two Cotswold Heritage Perseus steam engines sharing a common bed plate. This is the engine I intend to use in the steam plant, but I'm not working on the engine today. First of all, I need to look at the boiler, the gas tank and the hand pump. There is something not right about this boiler plant, and I think I know what it is. The boiler is definitely from Cotswold Heritage. It even says Cotswold on it and has a serial number. Plus, it also has the turned aluminium cap, which looks very nice. Dismantling the plant begins by removing the safety valve followed by the aluminium cap complete with the chimney. Here you can clearly see the fire tubes and the superheater or steam dryer. And the idea of this is to dry the steam by passing the steam pipe over the top of the fire tubes. Once you get slightly out of the realms of steam toys, then superheaters or dryers become commonplace. Even on many steam toys, there is a certain degree of superheat as the steam pipe passes near the fire. As I've just mentioned, there is something not right about this steam plant. Here is a brand new Cotswold Heritage steam plant, and this is what they look like. The boiler looks the same, but the pump and the gas tank are quite different on the model that you see here. Time, I think, to disconnect the gas pipe. The gas jet is screwed into the holder, which is held in place in the Venturi tube, with a single slot-headed machine screw. The other end of the pipe obviously goes to the gas tank. The gas pipe has an O-ring fitted internally, and the pipe is held in place on the gas tank valve by this knurled union that you can remove without using a spanner. The gas jet size is a number 8, which is quite small really. I find that gas jets of this size are very prone to being blocked by debris in the gas tanks. For cleaning gas jets, you would normally use a tool called a pricker, but it does have to be the same size as the gas jet. Don't even think about using a dressmaker's pin, that is far too big. All of the parts from this steam plant have been put in this plastic food container. Here are some parts that I got when I bought the plant. They were with it, but not attached to it. The displacement lubricator is not of the Stuart type, just the same design, but a bit smaller. Time to start removing all the parts from the baseboard. I'm not going to labour this so the video is running at a higher speed. The first things to remove are the four Allen bolts holding the boiler down to the board, along with the fibre washers. The paintwork on the body of the boiler is very good indeed, but the paint on the base plate is a bit chipped. I'll probably end up repainting the base. Look at the difference in the colour of the main mahogany baseboard when I take the boiler off. I intend to refurbish this mahogany base and it doesn't really matter if it all ends up a different colour because once the parts are fitted back in their original position you won't be able to see the difference anyway. What I'm doing here may be a bit strange. I'm just checking that the boiler is made from copper. It's a routine thing to do. I know this is made from copper. But nevertheless, I've scratched the inside top of the boiler which you'll never see just to make sure. The next part to go is the pressure gauge. I have to remove this because during the hydraulic test to twice working pressure, if I leave the pressure gauge in place, it will be damaged. As far as I'm aware, the working pressure of this boiler when it's in steam is 65 pounds per square inch. When I perform the hydraulic test, I'm going to double that and add a little bit more. I will test it to 150 pounds per square inch. That way, I know it's going to be safe. The pressure gauge banjo, which holds the pressure gauge siphon to the boiler, uses fibre washers to seal. And this one is still stuck in place. I think I'll fit copper washers when I put the boiler fittings back on. This boiler has the number 03005 on the maker's plate and underneath the base. The previous owner of this plant told me that he contacted Cotswold Heritage to try and get a boiler certificate for this serial number, but they weren't very helpful. After I've performed a hydraulic test to satisfy myself that the boiler is okay, 
I will take it to the steam workshop for another hydraulic test so I can obtain a boiler certificate for it. What I'm doing here is giving the baseboard a wipe with a damp cloth, but I think it's going to need more than that to remove all the grime that's on there. Here I'm removing the gas tank. As I showed earlier, this does not appear to be a Cotswold Heritage gas tank. The boiler is held down with Allen cap head bolts. The gas tank is held down with brass slot headed screws. And the pump is held down with yet another variant. These are Posidrive hexagon screws. Originally, when I inverted the tank and opened the valve like this, there was some liquid gas left in the tank, so I took it outside and drained the tank completely. This was a bit of a shock. It says Cheddar Models Limited underneath the gas tank. This is a Cheddar Models gas tank. Previously, I showed a brand new Cotswold Heritage boiler plant. And apart from the obvious with the gas tank, it's showing me that the pump is different too. It's not going to be a problem at all. This pump will be just as good as the Cotswold Heritage one. I don't even know whether Cotswold Heritage made pumps like this originally. I have nothing to go on. I'm really glad that these screws that hold the pump in position have a hexagon head because they were too tight for the screwdriver. This part of the job was a bit of a pain, but eventually I managed to remove the last screw. Now I have a mahogany baseboard that needs some attention. I've temporarily sat the parts on top of it, but the next part of the job is to clean out the boiler before I perform the hydraulic test. Just like I showed in a previous video, I'm going to clean out the boiler and descale it using Kilrock K. I'll show this in the next episode because the principle is quite different to the way I did it with the Willesco D20. That's about it for this episode. I'll play it out showing the Griffin steam engine running. This is a really nice twin cylinder engine. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.